it's not uncommon to find a top-class footballer putting his name to a book, usually a ghost-written memoir. But Louis Sahar, French striker, is different. No ghostwriter is involved in his book, which has taken him four years to complete. Already a publishing sensation in France, the English-language version has just been released. I wanted to write so I could express what I felt. Initially, I wanted to try to convey those feelings to my brother. And then I said to myself that perhaps I could write this in such a way as to tell young people all about my sport. People might think they know about sport, but perhaps they don't know the ins and outs, what goes on every day. I passionately wanted to write about it. So that's why I began writing on my own. Then I asked my agent to get in touch with publishers because there came a time when I felt I needed a bit of help in terms of how to structure the book. So we called in the experts. <laughs> And once I met Madame de Chambéry, everything went really well because right from the outset, she really understood the way I see things. We got on well, and that stage of the process was arguably just as important as the very first line of the book itself. It was very important. Any budding writer needs a guiding hand to transform youthful energy into prose. Georgia de Chambray is a bilingual editor and translator. Her task has been to help produce a French version and then an English translation. The book is about more than just the Sahar career. Large sections are devoted to thoughts on all aspects of the game. The first thing we had to do was structure it. Very much needed uh, structure. Um, and then it was a question of adding, subtracting, details. Um, and then, for example, I asked him what, I, I mean, a sort of classic question, really, that you ask is, you know, what was, what was one of the most important moments of your career? And he went off and a week later came back with an amazing, just a whole great chapter um, about the Champions League final, Man United v Chelsea, and the whole build-up and excitement and, mm, his knee goes, oh, I mean, the, you know, the human, I don't know, there was something very real and fresh and immediate about him and his voice. Sahar is in the latter stages of a career that's seen him perform at the highest level for a number of English clubs, including Manchester United and currently Tottenham. He's also appeared 20 times for France. It means he has plenty to say. He talks about issues and it sort of becomes you know, he talks about the banlieue, and then all his various friends join in. He went and talked to Zidane and Henri and Evra and, you know, all kinds of Lucien Park and, you know, and, and that, that gave it an extra richness that they joined in. So it's like a chorus of voices talking about the banlieue and money, or, which gave it an extra sort of special tinge of specialness. So, how easy was it to persuade some of the biggest names in football to give him their thoughts on the sport? I'm not holding up a sign saying that I'm a journalist, someone who's going to ask them tough questions. So they opened up quite easily. That allowed me to write a completely different book, unique, I'd say. It's very difficult to get so many important people within the game to contribute. Writing is a solitary profession and can require the sort of self-analysis not usually associated with sportsmen. So what's the experience taught him? I think you become a little more philosophical once you hit 30. No one can tell me they've seen and done everything by the time they're 20, even if it's what everyone thinks when they're that age. When you're young, you're a bit wild and you think your parents have no idea. We always say they're not from the same generation, but when you reach 30, you start to realise they were right and they had all that experience behind them. Yes, I've started to look at things afresh and I'm trying to go over what I was told in the past. I'm trying to put this down in the book so that people, whether they be young or old, can see life through my eyes. So ultimately this book, which I initially wanted to write by myself for my own family, well I'm trying to give it to every other family.
à d'autres familles.